G'day everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Pressure Point podcast and our big round three preview. It's exciting, exciting, another it's week of very three. exciting, very exciting. Have you uh, recovered after round two? Oh, took me a couple of days, but uh, no, it's good. I think I'm loving it because footy starts on a Thursday now, finishes on a Sunday. It's, it's good. Only, it's only a short break. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's good. really good. So there's almost footy every day, which is great. Um, but just before we get stuck into the, the round three preview, we've uh, uncovered some footage. Oh, here we go. Of you uh, from, was it Thursday night's game? Thursday night's game during the uh, the heat of the battle. So um, for our <laughs> for our viewers on YouTube, you'll be able to see this uh, come up on your screen. Um, but if you're listening through Spotify or iTunes, uh, make sure you uh, watch the YouTube video to see what Quinn's up to <laughs> during the game. <laughs> here we go. So we'll just play some audio now. Oh, that's going to be deliberate. He dropped it. Oh, you're like a distant. Oh, fuck. Was that a bit? Was that Jack Rewalt? That was Jack Rewalt. Yeah, that was Jack. This is my personal favourite. He's playing the game with his wife tonight, let me tell you. Oh, someone grabbed him! So what was that? That last one? That last one was Josh Dacos, the slippery little man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had some other words to say about him. Um, that was Josh Dacos. And no one could grab him. Yeah. He had a good game. Yeah, well, he was good, wasn't he? He was, he, very, he good. was very good for the pies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so uh, that was uh, that was Queen on Thursday night. You know, from a Richmond supporter, I'm, I'm um, uh, yeah, as a Carlton supporter, seeing a Richmond supporter act like that uh, makes me very upset. Well, let me tell you, are you glad you didn't? I'm glad... Um, you should be happy, sorry. I don't have any sources from your game. Because let me tell you, if you, I've had videos of you watching that Carlton game last week. I'm guaranteed they'll be worse than that. Yeah, I'll make sure they uh, didn't see the light of day after that game. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. All right. So we'll, um, we'll move into the into the podcast. So a big topic during the week and, and since we last recorded was the the racial tweet towards towards Eddie Betts. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's good to see the AFL world and the sporting world pretty much get behind him. Um, cause it, yeah, it's a horrific thing to see and, um, especially with everything going on in the world now to see something like that come up on Twitter and, you know, it couldn't have been any, any worse, the, the vilification towards him. So to see that come up was, you know, horrific and, um, yeah, it, it highlights why we're, why we're making such a big deal out of it at the moment and why players are taking a knee before the game and, um, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that was, that was pretty bad to see. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, it was disgusting. Yeah. It was disgusting. I mean, not that it's ever okay, but especially with everything that's going on. I mean, if there's ever a time to educate yourself, it's now. I usually like to try and shy away from... Not shy away, but I don't usually like to talk about this sort of stuff too much because I feel like I am uneducated on the topic purely because I will never experience or never have experienced what these people are going through. Yeah. Um, so I try not to say too much just because, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but this is just... It's disgusting. I mean, it's happening all over the world at the moment, but you, it's easy to think that in Australia it doesn't exist because you don't see it like you do in the States at the moment and everywhere else, but mm. it obviously is still around and yeah. it's disgusting. So I'm really glad to see the AFL, its players, everyone, you know, even the community as a whole is standing up. And yeah, absolutely. Tr- I mean, it's, it started, you know, Adam Goods highlighted this how many years ago? Mm. I mean, and it's still, I don't, I don't know how it's still happening. Yeah. And yeah, it just, it makes it even worse that like with, you know, it's dominating the news at the moment, all this, you know, the Black Lives Matter protest and all that around the world. Yeah. And for this to happen right in the middle of it, um, it's just baffling. So, um, yeah, so let's hope this all gets stamped out. Um, I think, I think there needs to be harsher penalties for people that, that troll on the internet like that. I think that what, what do they get? They, they get their account closed and, and a little slap on the wrist. That's, I think there, there needs to be harsher punishments. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to stop people from doing this. No, and I mean, they found this guy's account. Is, I'm pretty sure he's an Essendon supporter. Not surprising. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the, if he's a member, I'm not sure if he's a member. I presume he would be by the look of his account. It was a big, you know, mm. proud Essendon supporter and all that. The, the AFL, the Essendon, the Bombers, they're going to cancel his membership. They're, they're going to lay a punishment themselves as well. Yeah. If they really want to set an example... They've got to do it properly. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think it should be more than just a, a club punishment. Like, it, he should be able, he should be going to 
the law and or something there's something oh, you know i mean yeah i don't know how the laws are written and what they're yeah. written, what can be there done there needs to be something around something it. needs to be done yeah. definitely otherwise I mean, it's just going to keep going on oh 100 yeah. percent. i mean this guy we i looked at his account before we recorded the podcast and he had in his bio proud australian mm. you're not a proud australian no. you're not if you're saying stuff like that you're not a proud australian because indigenous people are australians that more so than any of us so correct yeah it's yeah. disgusting to see that but Hopefully we can just grow from this. And Eddie Betts handled it really well, I thought. Yeah, for sure. And I like I like what Sam Doherty did as well. His press conference about it. Yeah. Really uh, led from the front there, which w- which was good to see. So, um, but yeah, I think we can move on from that, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that's the last we see of things like that in the world. All right. So, looking at the games this week, what game are you uh, looking forward to the most? Well, it's easy to say Richmond, but surprisingly, it's uh, not the Richmond game this week. I'm actually um, excited to see the Bulldogs Giants game. I think uh, the last few years have had a pretty big rivalry growing. It's always a pretty good game, apart from last year's final series against with them. But uh, I think the Bulldogs need to have a big game after, what are they, 0-2 and two at the moment, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they need to have a big game against the Giants. And I think just knowing that they're modern-day rivals, I think it'll um, it'll be a good game to watch. And I know Josh Dunkley came out during the week saying the Bulldogs really want to get physical this week, mm. which I think they need to because they showed no signs of that the first, couple of, first couple of rounds. So I reckon that'll be a great game to watch this week. Yeah. What about you? What are you? Who are you looking forward to seeing? I'm really looking forward to the Collingwood St Kilda game on the Saturday. It's uh, you know, the Saints looked very impressive last week, and, and the Pies are one of the flag favourites. So it's uh, it's going to be a really interesting game, um, and, and also to see how Collingwood bounce back after that draw too. And um, yeah, sort of you know, well, they they got slated a bit for the sort of style that that game went. Um, but I don't know. I think if the Saints win that, geez, they're going to be uh, considered one of the contenders this season, I reckon. I think they will be. I know yeah. they had a good start to the season last year. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like this year, I mean, they're having a good start as well, obviously, but I feel like it's just a different feeling to what it was last year. Last year, they won a few easy games. And yeah. this year, they you know, they look like beating some good sides. So if they, yeah. how they come against Collingwood this week will be, yeah. Yeah, especially with the, the inclusions that they've had this season, players-wise. And they've got a great coach in Brett Ratton. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think they're, yeah, I think if they can beat the Pies this week, I think people are going to start really taking some notice for them. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, another game this week, I just mentioned earlier, the Richmond Hawthorne game. We'll touch on that. Jaeger Amira, do you reckon he'll come back? What, there's I th- talks. I think so. I think he's pretty likely to come back, and, and the Hawks need him back, especially after what happened last week. They got absolutely smashed in the midfield. So um, it'd be good to see uh, Big Yeg's back. He's, um, Jeez, he's a specimen. He is. He's a <laughs> Carved carb by angels, that man. <laughs> yeah, and and he can play footy too. So um, yeah, it'd be good to ha- good to have him back. And uh, I think the Hawks, yeah, they need him big time to to help out Tom Mitchell as well. So, um, and then for the Tigers, Jack Ross is he is he going to play this week? Is he going to come in? I'd love to see him come back in, but I feel like Josh Caddy is pushing back from um, calf injury or what I think he had. So yeah, I think Caddy slots into the team automatically. Although. Someone like Sydney Stack is under pressure. He had four touches against the Pies. So, yep. you know, with him gone, um, well, Liam, Liam Baker. I was just going to say yeah, that. Yeah, Liam Baker's gone home to WA, so he'll miss Thursday night's game. So there's there's room. Yeah. I, I really want to see Jack Ross back in the side. He showed some promising signs last year. Stiff to miss out. Yeah. Well, even on the grand final last year, really. Yeah. After they made him miss sit out for the VFL grand final. So I'd love to see him come back in the side and have a really big impact. Tigers winning? I think so. Yeah. I think the Tigers are going to win this one. Yeah. It'd be good. Both teams really need to bounce back. Same as you said with Collingwood. Richmond, I don't know what happened on the last Thursday, but their form wasn't good. Yeah. And Hawks got pumped by the um, Cats in the end. So both teams will be looking to have a big return this week. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Tigers for me. All right. Next one. We've got North Melbourne and Sydney. Uh, the early game on the Saturday afternoon. North coming off a, a great win and Sydney coming off a very narrow loss. So it's, it's going to be a, a very interesting game. Um, and it'd be good to see if uh, if North can back up what they did last week. I think they will. I think the signs we've seen from North early are good. I yeah. Think, I think North have got the, the talent for it. They've got consistent players, enough and a good mix of you know se- um, senior and junior players. If you want, it, that's what you want to call them. But yeah, I think I think North will be too strong for Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, I'm tipping North, but I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if the Swans do get up as well. North are just that team. Well, they have been that team in the last last few seasons that that are super inconsistent. So. See how they go. Jeez, um, oh the next game, Geelong Carlton on the set day. <laughs> Maybe I should speak about this. You one. can speak about this. Um, well, obviously, 
it could be a dark night for the Blues um, after last week's performance. But it will be interesting to see how they bounce back. I think they need to really start come out of the game strong with a good first quarter. I think, you know, I mean, you can speak on this yourself now, but I think that's where they've been lacking the last few rounds. Absolutely. They they need to start well this game. Even like they're not they're not expected to win. I don't expect them to win, but after what's been what's been said during the week and how their first quarters have gone pretty much over the last jeez, almost 12 months, they need to they need to start well and show everyone and their fans that, you know, they're looking to rectify this this, you know, starting issue. So I think it's vitally important and, you know, if they have another poor first quarter and go scoreless again, then the Heat's definitely going to come on David Teague probably for the first time in his short coaching career. So um, because, you know, there's something clearly is going wrong in that in that changing room before the game, that the motivation for the players to, to get up and start well. And um, yeah, it appears to be a coaching issue if they, if they really can't get that first quarter sorted because... Well, yeah, it seems to be the difference in, in a lot of their games. Yeah, well, Carlton really seemed like a team that sort of start playing well once they realise their backs are against the wall. Exactly. Which, it can't come to that. But if the Heat comes on Teague, what, what does Carlton do from there? They've just gotten rid of Bolton. Teague's a new mm, coach. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not saying the Heat's going to come on him and then they'll sack him. I think the Heat comes on him to adapt and, and change the way he's going about things. Yeah, because um, yeah, it, 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 they've shown that they're capable enough to... You know, really in a lead and, and, and pinch a win, but I oh know to get to that next level, they need to, they need to start um, they need to start playing four quarters and, and winning games and and not going down to Geelong and, and accepting a twenty point loss. You know, they need to go to Geelong and be like, we're going to win this or we have to win this game. So yeah, for them to get to that next level, they need to start having an attitude like that. But I don't know. Time will tell. We'll, we'll see how they go. Um, yeah. Loots of the Cats was zero and three, and that's you know in a short season that's it's almost season done. So, well, moving on, <laughs> a bit more positive. Please move on. Well, uh, Brisbane West Coast, geez, West Coast need to come out of the blocks early, don't they? They do, they do. Poor game last week. Um, they need to show something against Brisbane if they uh, if they're serious about winning the flag this year. Um, no McGovern as well. His uh, appeal got upheld. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Do you reckon he? Deserved a week? I think so. Like he, he's connected with him. He swung his arm, yeah. hit him in the face. So I think he deserved that that he, week. He came out and said he didn't think he connected. He didn't realize he did. I don't know how you're not sure you hit someone. You either did or you didn't. I don't know how you can lie about it when it's on camera. Yeah, the footage is pretty conclusive. Yeah. So, so now yeah. I think a week was probably fair. They need to start stamping out those sort of hits for sure. So, definitely. Yeah. And big news in Queensland. They're going to get two thousand fans, or well, hopefully, um, get two thousand fans in the stadium. Which is big news. It's a you know big development in uh, the coronavirus. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. It's hopefully that's a sign of things to come, um, and, that, and that happens in Victoria pretty soon because that you know all the, I think all the fans are itching to get back to the footy. So, um, but yeah, two thousand fans, you know, at Metricon Stadium is probably normal, isn't it? No, oh, that's probably a bit more than usual, <laughs> wouldn't you think? <laughs> well, speaking of uh, down at Metricon, Gold Coast Adelaide. Yeah, well, big stat that I um that I did hear during the week was. Adelaide are the only team um, to never lose to the Gold Coast. That surprises me. Yeah. I, I can't believe Gold Coast has beaten every team <laughs> They've beaten, other than yeah, Adelaide. It's, sorry. it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, we will just going through that before. Like you know, Gold Coast have beaten every other team in the AFL at least once, except for Adelaide. So this is probably their best chance to beat them. Well, the way I Adelaide are playing at the moment and the hype behind the Suns and the role that they're on, I mean, not after last week, but the role that they're on after last week, I reckon they'll get them. Yeah, I think I think they should go in as favourites. The Suns, just about they should, especially yeah, especially coming off their big win. Um, Brandon Ellis is he gonna oh. is he gonna debut for the Suns, the former Tiger? I think if he's fit, he should be. Yeah. Um I mean, he's probably more of a leader type for him as well, coming in with experience, winning, you know, winning two premierships and all that. Comes in with a bit of experience, and he's just a work machine. He runs not all day. Yeah, he he always um, racks up a lot of K's on the ground. So I reckon if he's fit. I reckon he should be in the side. Do you reckon he's going to be this, a similar player to what he was at, at Richmond, or do you think he's going to get found out a bit not being around a a good team like the Tigers were? I feel like he may get found out a little bit because he doesn't have the same stardom that he had at the Tigers around him. Although he's really going to have to step up because he is now that leader that they look up, yeah, look towards. Yeah, you, Which you, at Richmond, he was, you know, he wasn't necessarily that leader figure. Where now he has to be. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's almost one of the most. 
Well, he probably is one of their most experienced players, isn't he? Oh, now. Most, most definitely. Yeah. So it's hard to say for me. I, I think it'll be a good test for him anyway. And hopefully if he does play this week, he'd you know, show some good signs. For sure. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip the Suns for that game. Yeah, me too. Oh, God. The next game. Essen and Melbourne. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's another very interesting game. Um, obviously, Melbourne need to improve on last week, um, especially on their, their second half. Um, and then Essendon, you know, in time, time's gone by, these are the sort of games that Essendon drop and um, makes them that, that super inconsistent team. So it's a game that both teams really need to win. Um, you know, Essendon are com- coming off two really narrow losses and um, and Melbourne with all the all the hype and expectation on this year. Narrow wins. Narrow wins. Narrow wins Essendon had, not losses. Did I say losses? Yes, yeah. you did. Oh. <laughs> Narrow wins. I wish they were narrow losses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it should be um, it should be a really good game. This one, um, Big Orazio might be back for the Bombers too. Orazio Fantasia, That's yeah, uh, that'd be huge for the Bombers. Yeah, if he comes back in, I I feel like the Bombers are a better side even without him. But just to have him back in, and you know, they they if they're going to win, they can't win by two points again. They need all six points. They need to have a I think a solid win against a, a Melbourne that really appears to be struggling again. Yeah. If Essendon get get the Melbourne that played in the second half last week, they'll they'll pump them. They'll pump them. They yeah, should. They'll pump. Them. They got, have to. They've got. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly. If right. they want to take that next level, Essendon need to win comfortably. I think so. Yeah. So I mean, for me, I'm tipping the Bombers for this one as well. Yeah, I'm going to tip Essendon just, but I'll I'll be happy to get that tip wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the last game of the round, we got uh, Freo and Port Adelaide, and Freo hosting Port Adelaide in Queensland. Never thought you'd hear that one. No. Bizarre. So. Definitely. Well, it'll, it'll be interesting to see because there's no home ground advantage. I know down at West Coast there's a, or down in Freo, there's a bit of a home ground advantage you can say they've got down there. But For sure. Definitely not the case anymore. And I, I don't know. I think Jesse Hogan potentially returning for the Dockers will be good for them. Yeah, especially, that'd, that'd be huge. Yeah, especially mm. coming up against Port, who are in flying form at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I think it's sitting top of the ladder. They are, with a percentage of about 290. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. So I think... Um, Oh, they would be pushing for Hogan to get back, definitely. Yeah, and Freo looked quite good last week, and they're in their loss to Brisbane. So if they can get Hogan back, I think they'll uh, they'll get close to winning that for sure. Definitely, I'm personally going to tip Port Adelaide. Though. Oh, think, I'm going to tip Port too. Yeah, I think but, Port are too yeah. strong for Freo at the moment. Yeah, but it wouldn't surprise me if Freo make a pretty good game of it. Well, here's hoping. Yeah. All right, and that is all the games for the round. So we'll uh, this leads us into our engagement question for the week. Who will get the most disposals this weekend out of Lockie Neal, Tom Mitchell, or Paddy Dangerfield? Who are you? Who are you going to go? I'm going with Lockie Neal. I think Dangerfield's got, I don't know, he's, he's sheltered a bit by uh, Selwood and Ablett taking possessions off him down there. And Tom Mitchell's playing the Tigers, so he probably won't get any touches. So Lock, Lockie Neal, definitely, for me. Um, yeah. No, I'm going to go Paddy Dangerfield, just because he's playing the Blues, and I think he's going to going to have a field day, unfortunately. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, if I had to, I have to pick one, and I'm picking him. Right, there we go. <laughs> All right, um, and that's us done. That's uh, that's our round three preview done. Um, it's a big weekend of footy. It's going to be interesting to see uh, which teams are, are the real deal and which teams aren't. So um, that's us done. Beautiful starting off with a big Thursday night game again, which is good. Get the week yeah. started early. That's it. That's hopefully the, hopefully this Thursday night's uh, much more entertaining than last week. Wow. Yeah, if you keep more than five goals a piece, it'll be good. Something to do on a Thursday now. Which is good. That's it. All right, well, uh, that's us done. Uh, have a good weekend, and we'll, uh, we'll speak to you next week.